And today's opener is Coastal Forest, the round two opener. So we're gonna take a look. I gotta get these drafts plugged in. But we got the Boomers led by Sato with Smiley and Lemmy against the three Westland Paladins. Their highest player is Geoff VP. And they have the Dave yeah. and Mauizawa. Mauizawa. Something like that. But I think I the draft. Uh huh. I was really looking at these teams and. Just because obviously Sato, he's in the Hidden Cup. Massive name, you know? Right. And massive name for a reason. He is good enough. He is one of those top 16 players that qualified for Hidden Cup. He is insane. However, I feel like Coastal Forest could be the one map where the other team has a chance. Because if he is that super flank and all three players just ignore the other two and say, we're going to kill Sato. I'm not saying that it's a good chance, but that might be their best chance. You know, that would be pretty interesting if they all just tried to kill Sato. They might they might still lose doing it, but they could say, hey, we killed Sato. Yeah. I actually and... don't know if they can kill him even one beat. Well, let's see, a 1400. Yeah, they could. They have a 1400. Yeah. I, I think 3v1 they definitely could, but the problem is Sato does have teammates. Yes. So, <laughs> I think if it was maybe three one Ks, I don't think they could kill him. But when you throw the fourteen hundred in, and then you got eleven slash twelve hundred, the fact that Sato's second strongest player, like their team's second strongest player, is as strong as the strongest on the other team, does not fare well for them. It does not. That makes it rough. If their strongest player was like a twelve hundred after Sato instead of a fourteen hundred. Then I see a better chance, but I agree. They need some kind of just, miracle, but that from Elo alone, it's not looking like it's likely. Yeah, they need some but... kind of miracle, but like you said, if there's one map that anything crazy could happen on, it would be Coastal Forest. Yeah, and I've been the underdog before. I was last week with my team, and you know, there's always hope. Yeah, Something could always happen. This is the first Note time. That Go ahead. Somebody could knock at Sato's door and they pause it at a really bad time for him, you know? Like, <laughs> things can always happen. Yeah, um, this is also the first time Hillford has been actually drafted by a team, I think. So the Boomers picking the Boom map mm. and sees the mountain from Westland Paladin. And. Persians have been quite common on the ban list. I think they're near the top. It might be Mongols first and Britain second and then Persians, but we could actually look at that. But let's let's follow the draft. Mameluk says go Westland Paladin. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to count them out. There's always hope. Until the game is called, it can always go crazy. Right, and we do have team stats this tournament. If you guys look at the little graphic on the screen. So we don't have any for Boomers. Last week they were not able to play. They had an admin loss. So that's why they're 0-1. Um, but like if we look at the left at the three Westland Paladin in the blue, we got their total kills per game. Their KD is 0.5. Their eco kills, eco deaths per game, just a few extra team stats to throw in the mix, because why not? Um, we even have map stats, but we don't have enough data yet for them to matter. Like it shows their 0 and 1 on acclivity, but I think round 3, 4, 5, we'll start seeing what teams are better and worse on different maps. 100%. We're going to get a lot more data on that as the tournament goes on. And that'll influence bans for the map draft. Like, oh, this team is undefeated on this map. Oh, they're really bad on that map. So it'll add even more strategy, I think. I feel the same. And I feel like, especially on, like, open-esque maps like Arabia. Well, actually, I guess Arabia isn't in this tournament. But on Acclivity, mm -hmm. we could either see Acclivity be favorites for a lot of teams or be insta-banned for teams. Yeah, because it's Arc like... it is the closest to Arabia. It's and the there's... new... 
Arabia. There's so, some teams that may not do as well on Arabia style maps. Yeah, I think Lowland and Acclivity are the closest two maps to Arabia. Yeah. Lowland may be the most aggressive Arabia style, like Kawazan is, but it's different. It's got water, it's got boats. So Yeah, I feel like Kawazan is almost aggressive at the same time that it isn't. Because it could go... You could have a fight over a pond for a while and nothing on land. Or you could have one person give up their pond and just go full land at the other person. And then the pockets, as we saw from the other day, the Berbers especially, with the double pond, their ability to just absolutely spam knights in the castle age is insane with that extra food eco. That was amazing. Like, it was, what's his what face? Eisen. He had so many numbers. And the two flanks going forward, one of the flanks loses their pawn. It didn't even matter because the pocket got so massively ahead. Yep. Where Mamalu went absolutely insane. Fish traps, I think, early. Imagine if he would have had two pawns. Maybe that's a different game. Yep. And also, if you can <laughs> stop revealing our strats, it's out. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Now, but also, if uh, the two flanks had fought on water as well giving the middle or the back two pawns to the pocket, you know, that's a really, really different game because then it's almost pocket v pocket. And I think in the future, we are going to see a lot of sieves like the Berbers and Malians being played on Kawazan if it's selected, because you're going to need the option for camels, because if both flanks are engaged more on the water side of things, the archer numbers are not going to be there that's to counter true. the camels. So you're going to see kind of like a back and forth, I feel, between the pockets. If the pockets are at about the same or close in the elo, that they may go camels instead of knights if there are not that many archers on the field, depending on how the water fight has gone. And you make a and good... I, think... oh, I was, gonna I was say... just going to say yeah. uh, the pawns do have enough fish to make it worthwhile to fight over. You and... don't want to just give a pawn to your enemy. And a good point you make, I always say camels are bad 3v3 because there's so many archers, but you're making a good point on that map. Camels are good, because the flanks are fighting with fires, they have less archer numbers maybe than normal, and it opens... not saying the... camels are good, but it opens you the door where they have the option. Yeah, they can work there better than some other maps where if you're a camel-only sieve and the flanks take off with archers, it feels so bad. Like, you yes. can't do a lot. You can, like, run at pocket, sort of, but... Usually, yep. usually camels don't do well in three v three. From what not we've as seen in well, the past. no, I agree. But saying that, we do have Gajaros as the first pick for the three Westland Paladin, and then on the other side, we have the Hindustanis picked. So we do have both of those camel only sieves already picked. And this is a first ever. Look how far Britons fell down the draft. For the West, they really did. Even Lithuanians kind of banned. Yeah, I think it's a first ever that they're not banned. Right, and the <laughs> fact that they're picked like so late, I've never seen them fall this far in the draft. Um, another thing, Lithuanians right after, and for those that don't know, the relics were kind of unbalanced in our maps. If people looked, they could be really one sided. That's fixed. So the relics now spawn fairly on all of the new maps for this tournament. They should. I, I tested many times and looked. Um, that should help because you don't want Lithuanians to be able to get zero relics. I don't think relics are that big of a deal in team game, but they are kind of with Lithuanians. Even more than just Lithuanians, I do think that relics can have a huge advantage as the gold is running out. That extra, let's say somebody got four relics mid castle age. They'll have gotten between 1,000 to 2,000 gold by the time they're heading in. Right, or like Kawazan. There's so much gold on that. I'm not yeah. saying they don't matter. I, I feel like they're more important than 1v1s. They are important in team games. And another side note, as we look at the right, something interesting about Sato, he is the highest rated player <laughs> ELO-wise in Age of Empires when it comes to team game, 1v1. So he may be the only S++++ in our system. I don't think anyone can actually rate higher than him. Like, Viper <laughs> is like an an S++, I think. Like, he's like an 8 or 9. Yeah. So Toe is the I most mean, expensive player, but he is incredible. So we'll see. I, 
I feel like anybody that has reached 2,500 1v1 or higher should be the maximum rating, no matter what their team game ELO is, because we know a lot of the pros don't play ladder team game because right. there's no point. Oh, you're, you're saying they should just be 10 regardless? Yes. Like, anybody that qualified for Hidden Cup is a 10. Yeah, because if... I don't care if their team game ELO brings it to an 8 or a 9, technically. They're a 10. Yeah, I'm curious what, like, someone like Hera would be or MBL. But if they were only, like, 8, that would just be insane value. You're right. They'd almost need to be yeah. worth more. But I think I think 10 is fair. It gives Sato 6 points to work with. And he actually went with a 14-point team, so... An E tier and a C tier, but yeah. I know him and I Smiley like... grind it out on ladder and they kill very strong players, 2v2, so. Yep, and I I like to see people, like especially people like Sato, playing with who they want to play. You right. know, he's not, he's not trying to max out his points or anything. He's just like, I want to play in this tournament. I got some friends. Let's go. Right. Like, that to me is... Very nice to see. Absolutely. And we're going to have a double slash maybe triple header. Um, right after this match at noon, less than an hour from now, we have Heffalumps on Crack versus Les Newberts. And that is a i think a 15 and a 16 they're they're close enough it's gonna be very even and that will be a very very competitive set i feel yeah and speaking of these stats let's just take a look at them real quick i know we don't have that much data yet but if you guys see on my screen oh, oh whatever i didn't set this up perfect um this is the overall. So the best Civ so far, if you discard these one-time played Civs, Portuguese. They're 8-1. and one, 88%. That's across all maps. Italians are up there. 7-1. and one. Khmer, 7-2. and two. Mayans have always been good. Britons are 5-2. and two. No surprise that they're doing well. Ethiopians, 57. We have several in between. Let's see what the worst Civ is. That has a lot of games. Lithuanians are surprisingly one and four. Yeah, so far. And Tatars are picked a lot on Acclivity, but they don't win a lot on it. It was just like that last tournament, too. People think because the hills, like, they're good there, but they just, they don't win on Acclivity. We can even look at the I Acclivity feel, stats. I feel like it's because Tatars are, they really have, like, power spikes. And then they're good for a little while, but you, you need to make something kind of happen with them. Right. Because other civs, just especially like uh, Britons, they have their TC cost reduced. So they're going to be able to boom the Tatars. The Tatars have those sheep that really, really help with keeping like mass numbers at the same time as booming a little bit. Yeah. But aside from that, they don't have any really real eco bonus. And so they're going to kind of fall off late castle, early imp if they don't get some damage in. Because now I say that they'll fall off, but early imp, they are also very strong once they get their... I think they still get Parthian tactics for free, do they not? Yes. Oh, wait. Yeah. I don't know actually about Parthian. I know they get Thumb Ring for free. Is it also yeah, Parthian? I'm double check that. But I think it's the awkward transition yeah. on that map, too, to Earth CA. is free as well. Oh, I didn't know that. That's really good. Yes. So them, their early imp, as soon as they hit imp, those CA are so good against other, like, a uh, crossbow player, you know? So it's really that late castle, getting the click up is so important for them. If they can hit imp with a CA mass, they are going to do some damage. Because that free Parthian tactics is massive. Right. Um, since we're starting on Coastal Forest, Italians are 3-0 and on that map so far. Malians are 2-0. Yeah. Japanese 1-0. and There's not a lot of games played, so we don't have a lot of data. But Koreans have done bad. Gujaras have gone 0-2. 
So we'll have to follow that. But I, I love the Italian pick there. I, that was always part of my draft and past tournaments and even ranked. They're just very versatile. They can do a lot of different things. They don't do... Yeah. They aren't like perfect at Cav, but they get fully upgraded Cavalier, if I'm not mistaken. You should toss in a reminder to them that they have to be colors not seven or eight. Oh, well, can looks you... like somebody might have said that in their lobby because they have switched off of those colors now. Okay. I like that rule. I don't like gray, honestly. Well, I thought it was for the maps, you know, if the maps don't uh, spawn correctly. It's the maps, too. But I like yeah. the rule because it's... I don't like gray. Yeah. That is just... I love orange, but not being able to be pocket with orange kind of sucks. Mm. I loved age four for that reason because you couldn't pick position. So oh. I can always play orange. What is it always coastal forest like? You don't know where you're going? Yep. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but there's not really any flank or pocket sieves in the same way. So right. it's a different game in that sense. Someone in the their lobby said, Man, this is more professional than Hidden Cup. I wouldn't say that, but we do go big on our setup and our stats and all of that. And I think it's definitely high quality. Wait, who said that? Someone in their pregame. Uh... One of these teams right now. It looks like they're piling in. Wait, is it up? I don't see it. Yes, game is up. All right, game one. Let's go. I hope my capture H doesn't have like issues. Oh, uh, they put on a spec delay. Oh no. The or days. no wait, it's probably loading, right? Uh maybe. But uh, just I... the time. I thought this bar only appeared when there was a spec delay. I know it's appeared when like you're loading the initial screen too. If I'm not mistaken, because mm. it was just on the other thing and I just clicked, boom, there it is. They might have put a minute spec delay. I hope not. Because that means our audio will not be in sync with the spy cams. Yeah, it's still loading. I, I think it's not spec delay. Because that countdown's done and I'm still like on the loading screen. Geoff VP yeah. is still loading. I don't think there's a, I think we're good. I just put a reminder in the pregame just in case. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to update the teams. Let's go. All Boom. right. And this is what I was talking about. We have Sato on the super on flank. The flank. The super flank. Now, does Sato know, because he's Mongols, does he know that the scout takes extra damage from boars? I don't know. Because if he tries to lame because he's <laughs> Mongols, this could be a surprise for him. I don't right. think he would mess up the lame, but I think he'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> if he's about to hit it, we got to list it in and see if he has like a what the hell happened reaction. Yeah. And you know what? He's like going he's forward. Let's it. listen. Let's listen. Uh, wait. Yeah, I think he's going to see it. Let's listen in. Alrighty. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I'm pushing. I have three ball with Mongol, and I have my teammate pushing media. Isn't it a dream? Yes. <laughs> okay, you can push with this one if you want. You no, okay, there is spec delay. There's the nobody pushing what? here right now. Okay. There is a re. Yeah. Oh no. Are they kidding me? They did a re. Did actually a re? Let's um let's cut yep, the chatter. I killed the chatter. Oh man. <laughs> this team, they're smart. Sato got the lame and they're gonna call a re. So do we exit out now? Yeah. <laughs>
I'm just gonna ping them to make sure that they know no spec delay. Yeah. It's the only way the spy cams work. Yeah, I wanted to know if he was like, what the heck? That boar hit yeah, me harder. Yeah, we would have missed it. Yeah. So you were right. I guess that timer probably is only there for spec delay then. I was just assuming it was a loading. Yep. Usually for me, if there's no spec delay, it'll go right to the loading screen. Sometimes the loading screen does take a little bit longer if a game is uh, not loaded yet, but that bar only appears for me when there's a spec delay. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of re's on this map because we allowed it. Um... <laughs> Yeah. But in a way, we allowed it because we wanted the re to be important. And we saw the, um, what was it, Clemens team against Stomp? Yep. Stomp used their re earlier in the set. So they didn't have it on this map when they needed it. So that was kind of the thought process behind it. And also, this being an opening map, but teams could use their re here and then not have it for the rest. And it's like, yes, you do have a re to use. But is the first game of the set really going to be the most important right i think you only because you might even be worse off with the read now sato's not going to be on the flank i actually think him on the super flank is where you want him in a way yeah but mongols having access to a lame boar like that that i didn't really think about because he he was right when he said of mongols with three boars and then ally pushing the deer and it's a dream <laughs> he was he was so right he could have probably done a 14 up and gone for scouts. Obviously, that would be silly to do it that fast, but uh, and it, it feels, regardless, his it, eco would have been absolutely insane there. It definitely feels bad to come away with that and then a re steals it from you. Yep, but that can only happen once. Yeah. Maybe he'll uh, jack two boards this time. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's possible with the... Uh, with the new damage. With the damage, yeah. Yeah. Now, the crazy thing about this set where um, Clemens got a lame, he got it from Super Pocket. He ran all the way from Super Pocket and stole a boar. <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> Usually it's the flank jack and the boars. Looks like and game the is game up. game is up. And now Sato has the Super Pocket. <laughs> Who's the flank? The flank right is Lemmy for their team. So their team is set up in order of ELO, with Sato being the strongest in the super pocket, Smiley being their second in pocket, and Lemmy being their weakest at the front. Okay. We'll take a look at Lemmy. Lemmy playing the Khmer. He's got houses he can hop in and all that good stuff. Smiley with the Malians, and Sato back with the Mongols, of course. And the Dave Dravidian flank, I like that. You're going to give your allies the dock bonus. You got all this extra wood for the front line. Mayans yep. isn't... You don't usually see Mayans on this map. Um, nope, because Eagles just lose to Knights. But... And a Frank Super Pocket. Like that. Yeah. However, his build order is already behind if he's going to fish. Really, what you want to do is with your fourth vill, or sorry, your second vill created, mm -hmm. you want to take a boar, bring it back, have five people on boar. You're going to be force dropping, but the five can sustain villager production. And then you can go out for your lumber camp earlier to get that dock up and the fish going ASAP. Yeah, Sato's. Well, Sato's Mongols. He's already. Eight yeah, he's already here. eight, and he's got another one coming in. Yeah, so his five bills, you could even get away with four. But I do feel like that would just hinder your food income to the point where, well, now you're not going to be clicking up to feudal on time. So five is nice to get the dock up faster. Right. And he is sending that fifth bill that was under the TC out to dock. So he's oh, just yeah. keeping the four on deer underneath. There it goes. Meanwhile, on the five on wood. Side, yep. We have the fourth going. I, I'm curious if Geoff will dock or not. I assume he will, but it uh, is a lower rated fifth team. Bill, fifth Bill is going out towards the wood line, so I have to assume he is. Because otherwise this build order is going to put him up very late. Right. Even for a fast castle, you want to start taking more food first. 
He has another sheet positioned under yeah. the TC, so I don't think that Vil... Oh, that Vil is taking a board. He's not going for the Dock Knight right now. Wow. Yeah, typically FC even. You don't need and five on Wood just early. above his Lumber Camp, you can see the Eagles really, like, Whoa. a carcass or something. Whoa. They are just going at it. I, I don't you know, know what... what is there that they love, but they love it. I'm curious. Can a scout do a follow command on a bird? No. Okay. Because we saw that game earlier last week. Um, MTE was stealing a boar on this map, and the boar aggroed ridiculously far because of the bird. Uh -huh. So, like, I was, like, I was wondering, like, if you got far enough away, you just, like, auto-follow a bird so the boar just chases you forever yeah. while they're trying the to block. The is coming up from Geoff now. And Sato quick walled in a wolf and then deleted the palisades. So <laughs> back. Missed that. Yep. And then he palisaded in the villa around the fish. Nice. It's clean. And Lemmy is the Khmer super flank. I gotta say, this build order for an 1100 to go for it is two, very cool to see. Two on wood? You're talking about Lemmy? Yeah. He's probably been um coached, trained a little bit. But I don't know, Sato's been in hidden cups, so maybe not. <laughs> Let's see, Smiley is about to click. Lemmy has just clicked. Will Sato just be, um, yeah, he's going to probably FC, it looks like. I would assume so. Between the Mongol bonus and having that water, there's almost no reason not to FC. And I assume the three Westline know who they're up against. Most people know who Sato is. Yeah. And even if they didn't, they could see from the rankings if they did check, if they did any kind of uh, pre-game scouting on the, their opponent, they would see his elo and go, okay, this guy is pretty good. <laughs> we have a problem. This guy is insanely high elo. The birds are just going to live there, it looks like. Oh, some of them yeah. are leaving. Yeah, some of them are migrating. It's getting a little Some are cold. coming back. Okay, that's why. Yeah, they're trying to get their friends to come with them to migrate. Okay, Lemmy's up. Yeah, his build, you know, for an 1100. I think he forgot... Oh, no, no, he didn't forget the barracks. He's Khmer. Amazing. He is indeed Khmer. And like I said, I'd love to see that kind of ambitious build order from an 1100. Yeah, and he's like kind of walled his woodline in with his building placement. Yep. I guess it's not the end of the world if it's not walled in, because you got your houses you can hop in. Exactly. Fast stable. Okay. So there's a jump from Smiley and Sato. Can we listen a in on them? A double barracks from the Dave? Can we listen to um, Boomers? I want to hear the scout coordination. For sure. I think he's panicking a bit. Oh, it's still open. My scouts are he, coming. He would have a he would have a spear, I think. So careful. Oh, we can kill that one. That yeah, spear is out. <laughs> Ouch. All right, I'm gonna cut the chatter. Yep. So the, the three scouts forward right away is big on this map. I think you need all of them. Yeah, it's so aggressive. The, the thing too with the Dave there, before we listen into the spy cam, you can see his double barracks. He already has supplies, and he is now spamming spearmen. <laughs> Yikes! This is fantastic. Wait, no, I love to see it. This is hilarious. Wait, he has supplies? Does it make spearmen cheaper? Nope. Oh, nope. okay. He just saw just... the scouts and started making the spears. Double. And it's it's Dravidians, so everything's half off. Yep. 
the men at arms, the supplies. We're just gonna see full men at arms spam. This is awesome. Yep. So it's it's double scouts for um boomers. Smiley and Lemmy both opening scouts. Sato's on his way to castle already. And Jeff got pushed off of his woodline by Lemmy. Lemmy is playing fantastic. Wow. Running under the TC oh. here a little <laughs> As, bit, but... You know, that's like the caster curse. Whenever I compliment something, something bad happens right afterwards. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. It just always happens that way. Lions with the range, but don't see any archers out just yet. And all of them are making spears. Look at this army from the Dave. Yeah. The Let's Dave um, is going in on infantry. We've never heard Westland. And Smiley gonna maybe get a vill from the Dave. I think she's gonna Looks like uh, it. Oh. Oh, she dodged the arrows. Wow. For the most part, that yeah. was clean. Um, let's listen in on... Oh, the spear. On the Westland. I want to see what they sound like. We've never heard them before. For sure. Yeah? Yeah, go, go. It's a handful, It's a Cito with the castle. It's now going to go again, guys. Of course, we're going to go again. What did you expect? We're going to go again with the call. Nee, je weet wat hij gaat doen. Ik ben okay. voor het aan het gaan, hè, jongens. Hier. We can kill the chatter. Don't have to understand their language to know what that reaction was about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not actually sure what they were speaking there. I have some guesses, but... Looks like Jeff with his scouts is taking a decent fight against the two there. Yeah, now these... Oh, there's a hole. They're doing pretty well here, but now Sato with the, the step, step lancers. lancers. Oh, that's going to be nasty. Yeah. The double stable. He has his fish going. He it... has a second TC going up. And <laughs> Look at the... My... The it's... men arms can't even touch him. Nope. And you already see the score from Sato. He is... Second he is going to have some fun here with the step lancers, <laughs> I imagine. Second TC, he's fish booming away, step lancers pumping. I just hope that uh, the three Westland Paladin don't call it too soon. Because Sato is obviously very good, but I'd still love to see them give it the good old college try. Yeah, as this... they say. This overchop on the Dave's woodline, he's definitely getting punished for. Yep. And Lemmy doesn't have any armor, though, so it is going to be cleaned up pretty easily. Oh, that's true. The Vils can fight it. The archers are there. Fletching just came in for Mawizawa. Mawizawa. Yeah. That's how you say it. Mawizawa. Now, the nice thing is that they do have some archers on the field, so as long as, oh, those archers that are going to get caught by the Lancers, they should go in the gate to the woodline. Oh, he's running a little bit, though. Now, he has some spears nearby, but I don't think he'll realize just how ineffective spears are against lancers now, until I, he uses them. One armor on the lancers. I assume the archers can kind of fight him, but Sato's not even going to let him touch him. Nope. And as well, Sato is killing Jeff's fish. Looks like Jeff just realized that. Fish going down. So it was a very late dock. It must have been from Geoff. It wasn't too, too late, no. Smokalot it says, it is about over. A, about 30 seconds after Sato's, but Sato Look building at, his fourth dock now. He is just taking that fish. Lemmy with 11 and 1 Eco KD. Wow. Yep. The 1100 doing work. I bet Sato has, Sato has a decent KD for 16 and 2. <laughs> yep. And counting. And Jeff now trying to get up with a market, but Sato is hitting that wood line. And he's going to deny the market as well, which means that will be no second building. Not even a yeah. first building to go up. Geoff on the other is... side, Smiley is on Geoff or Jeff. I'm not sure how you. I should say his name considering they speak a different language. 
Yes, it's Maui just... Zewa is in the best position right now from them. Everywhere I look, they're just losing bills. Smiley's killing bills of Geoffs on his gold mine. Sato is killing bills of his on the wood line and continues to kill more. Geoff's going to be like down to 20 pops soon. Yeah, he's just trying to get that market up, and he does. And at the same time, Sato's hitting what Malazawa. What did it cost him? Everything. Geoff's KD is 9 to 40. Yeah, and Geoff got an eco kill at some point. I don't know what he killed. Oh, it's probably a, a fishing ship? No. I don't know. He killed a vill at some point. Yep. These step lancers are just running around. Yeah, the mass continues to grow. Lemmy's halfway to castle. Smiley's going to hit castle right now. And G off and the Dave almost there. Oh, and Mazzy. Oh, there's an overchop there. Beside the range. The Dave Spears walked through it, but... Doesn't like Sato wants to take on those archers just yet. Or maybe he's coming in? Nope, he's backing off. He doesn't have plus oh, two. He's getting gill nets right now. That's oh, this insane fish boom. 23 fishing ships for Sato. This is how you play the map. <laughs> like, Obviously, we can't replicate what he does as well as he does it, but man. Well, the other thing is uh, other players might play water a little bit more than this team. That's uh, true. Paladin have. If you're invested in fighting water, you can't just make fishing boats. That's a good point. Oh no, poor Geoff. Oh, the wall's coming down, but I think the Step Lancers can hit these through the gold. Oh, they moved. I don't know. They're, I feel like they're still going to get beat up. <laughs> Sato's trying to hit him through it. Oh yeah, they'll get through at some point. Even more Step Lancers at the front now. Oh man, Smiley's got knights behind them. Plus two is now yeah. in for Sato. And that house Miley's is not... Two TC. Lemmy is 2TC. That house is broken. Poor Geoff. It's a slaughter. And the Dave is about to lose his woodline. At this point, you know, I think it's safe to call it. Yes. We knew Sato was going to be a force to reckon with. But oh my gosh, did I not expect him to double everybody's score by 25 <laughs> Whoa. minutes. Seriously. That was absolutely insane. And gonna... the final KD for Sato being 65 to 7. Wow, I'm going to do MVP this, poll. This man putting on a clinic with an vil high of 83. Absolutely nuts. Watching right. him play is just insane. Yeah, it's entertaining. Like, even this isn't like that competitive of a match but it's still so clean i i can't wait to see them against like a strong team i want to know what happens can yeah. they can they handle it are they going to be too low value at 14 i don't know we'll, we'll find out next week most likely because i assume they'll yeah, be playing a hard team say, let me and smiley playing very well I feel like even though that they, they are lower elos, I feel like they're the lower elos that can do their build orders and everything else. It's when the games get messy where their elo is really reflected. Because right. Lemmy's build order, fantastic. It really Micro was. was decent. I mean, for an 1100, Lemmy played that so well. Yeah, he... I would have, if I didn't know the Elos, I would have guessed Lemmy to be around 13 or 1400 from that match, and Smiley around 1600. They were untouched at home, which allowed them to really focus and have the best possible game for them. And you don't usually see lower Elos going forward with their group of scouts and making plays. Like, that's usually too hard for them to focus on while doing their build order and all that. So for sure. they do a lot of things that higher elos would do. And that may have to do with Sato coaching that, shot calling it out too. I, I mean, I'm sure they're just used to it now, just going forward with the scouts. I think yep. it's so important to do. Um, it drives me nuts when my teammates don't go forward because they're still pushing a deer or something when it's time to go in. But game one... Goes to the boomers. You're lucky I'm not your teammate then. I love pushing the deer until <laughs> they're all in. 
you, you don't have a cutoff if it's like, oh, it's time to go forward now. Oh, if there's four deer, I'm getting the four deer. Okay. 100%. Sito with the MVP. I will update the stats real quick, and we're going to get right into game two. I think it's going to be Seize the Mountain. It is Hellfort, so far at least. Oh, is it? Yep. I think that's Boomer's home map, unless I have it backwards. I'll I'll check in a sec. No, I, I think that is. But okay. you are allowed to pick either map. So. That's true. Um, Maybe they really wanted to play Hellfort, and Sato's team took it. That is definitely a possibility. Maybe they saw the map and went, ooh, we have walls, we can get to Castle Age, and then maybe try to make something happen from there. Right. Because I definitely feel like the three Westland Paladin will struggle in Feudal Age on those more open maps against somebody with Sato's micro. Yeah. They'll and have also much... just with Coastal Forest, Sato getting that the super pocket to just free fast castle boom and put on pressure with the step lancers they had absolutely zero answer to that what's it with smiley smiley was malians i thought malians okay and then the they had the franks the mayans and the dravidians for the westland i could be wrong on malians but i'll double I check right now I, I still have it open yeah she was malians okay And they got Mongols with third pick, but Malians are incredible on that map. Khmer is always good early. So right out the gate, their first three picks for the Boomers are the sieves they used. Yep. I wonder if we'll see the next three for Hillfort. Right. I'm going to do um, a more creative prediction. So let's do... Let me make one. Will three Westland Paladins kill a Vel? Kill a Vel? That I'd do something different than that. Okay. Let's see. What do you think? Put put. See if they will all make it to Imp. All of the them? Closed map. Yeah. Okay. Will the three Westland Paladins all make it to Imp? It's a closed map. And the game is up and they are in. All right. And we do see the next three sieves from the Boomers being played here. Wow. They're just going in order. Yep. So it is Hillport. If you guys think they'll all make it to Imp... Oh, one, if you think no, two. Game's still loading. Here I am watching Sato's build order, so know how to play this map better. I just know it's hard to kill a vill on a closed map sometimes. Sato's with the new sieve. That's the uh, Georgians? Yes. Yep. Yep. So, uh, so he's definitely going to be going for the Manaspa play. Something interesting about how this map can generate, I think it happens about 25% of the time. At least on our version, if you notice the walls between teal and green and also smiley and lemmy, yeah, they're not connected. Yeah, but it does it on both sides, so we didn't try to change it because it's still fair. But it's just, in a way, I guess if you break in there, they're kind of safe because they're walled off from you. Yep, it's almost nice to be separate. Right. And all it takes is one palisade near the front there to block it off and to mess up the pathing for the other team. Yeah, exactly. You could you could put but a house. The other, the other really cool play that I've seen once on this map, probably last year sometime, was that somebody was going down in between the bases. This is when I was in the ranked pool. Mm -hmm. And somebody that was on my team, it didn't last long because they broke out, but they palisaded a cross. Because you can palisade over the palisade walls or palisade gate, sorry. They put a gate down you're saying and trapped in the enemy army it was in a, that little pathway. You're talking about like the gap between the two bases. Yep. Wow, they yep, actually you trapped can't an through. army in there. Yeah, it didn't last long because it is all just palisades. Yeah. But they got the wall off. Oh, that'd be dope. And I see. just thought that was really cool to see <laughs> because that is such a good trap. 
Right. This is definitely a big team base map. And the boomers being called the boomers, I could see why they picked it. They want to boom. Yep. But the Westland, I guess they picked it because they lost. They want to boom too. Lemmy already with 20 seconds of idle TC. I think they forgot to force drop and they were taking some hunt. Yeah, now on the edges, there's like random berries on this map outside the walls. Sometimes they're close, sometimes they're far. But I don't think there's like any deer or anything out there, is there? I think it's nothing. Uh, nope. Nope. Just some snow leopards. No when there's no fish. snow. Wait, is it really snow leopards? <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's it's the um winter crown slap down. The snow's melting away as we get near spring. The leopards are still hanging. And it looks like there's only two berry patches. They're both in the middle. Yeah, I see that. I don't know if anyone would actually take those. It sounds very risky for some berries. Oh, Maybe gosh, a TC no. you, on you them. You never would. But it's a forward TC too, so. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think you, you you never take the berries. They're just useless. Now, I don't know if this map's always like that. Is the back always super narrow? Not a lot of room for much. We look at each side. Uh, yeah. So that's common. Yeah, there's always good wood lines at the back, though. Oh, true. And it's safe. Yeah, and there's always room for TCs. So the Dave is up. That wh Why is he going up so quick? I'm not sure. I, it can't be for feudal aggression. There's, there's, I mean, do people do feudal aggression on this map? It's fortified palisades. It's very hard to break in. They're uphill. Yeah, typically you don't see feudal aggression on this map anymore. There used to be a strategy that was uh, men at arm towers and then another player do archers. But I have not seen that in a long time. Mawaziwa. Mawaziwa. Ziwa. Mawaziwa is also going up. And it looks like Geoff. And the barracks coming down. Geoff also may. They may not understand how FCs work. I don't know. No, I assume they do. Everyone. No, no. They're they're just going for they're a going, play. You're right. That might be their they best are. chance. Good luck booming against uh, the boomers. Well, this prediction just got a lot harder for them. Yeah. So long for Amp. Did anyone uh, predict? Wait. I didn't even know. Oh, wait. Did it to. not work? Oh, I made the title too long. It never went through. Whatever. We're not going to do it. Too late now. Yeah. <laughs> Especially this... now that we know that they're doing fetal aggression. Yeah. I just know a lot of these um unbalanced matches. I was saying the Ville idea because there's teams that haven't lost a Ville. The Dave is going for a fast castle here. He's trying it. But he got Loom. You don't really need Loom. He, he's getting his market, but he can't get he up. Sells the stone. He does. He sell the stone. Sell, sell some wood, wood. Buy some food. Okay, he's gonna do it. He's gonna he's gonna do it. Oh, and he was eating sheep. Oh, you hate to see those gajaras. Yeah. He, out just he, has, to get it. he can't make it the rest of the way. He, He's trying so hard. I gotta say, that is such an it. ambitious castle age, but he did it. The absolute madman. Wow. Now, what's he gonna do with it when he gets there? I don't know. He's taking gold, though. Long distance mining. Is it the drop putting TCs? Down a he'll have to... No, he's taking gold. I I don't Why know what's take the stone. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. The long distance mining. Range is coming up from Geoff. Yep, and you have the stable from Maoizawa. Making scout. And on the other side, well. This is FC City. Right. I still feel like they're going to be able to keep this out easily with their buildings positioned forward for the most part. Um, Lemmy can make his more forward, but it's fine. Yeah, I think Satel actually has the most open base. The others, they have the front wood lines as well. Yeah, Satel's buildings are all forward for the most part. 
Correct. I think. Yeah, just uh, in between his base and Lemmy's walls there. There's a pretty big opening where it's just walls, but. Yeah. I don't and think the gates. Be able to get in. That's the thing. These are fortified palisades, but they still got these paper gates all over the base. And Jeff is making archers, but they send that home with them. If you're going to be making army this soon, you got to be go. aggressive with it. Yeah, you don't like there's no surprise at this point. They know you went up quick. You're not going to catch them yep. off guard because Castle's already coming in for Sato. He's a minute and a half away. I think he's, yeah, just he's gonna... not going to be as fast as the Dave, though. The Dave is already up. Huh? The Dave with a wild build. Now, what's he going to make? He's up. He built a stable. Anything coming out yet? He's what's... got two bills going forward. No food. No food, no. He's eating the sheep. He doesn't care about the passive income. And he has no farms. Nope, he's going forward. I think this is going to be an all-in siege play from him. You can see a house foundation for those two bills. Oh. And they're going towards Sato, based on where the scouts yep. are. It looks like he's putting down a couple of farms now. He's making a camel. So he's going to have two camels, because his original camel scout did turn into a camel here. Yeah. The problem is, so... Sato will be the hardest one to like break into. He'll be the best at like keeping them out. At defending, yeah. yeah. But at the same time... It's their only chance. If they don't kill Sato, he's going to absolutely Shrek them later. Yeah, and Sato's going immediate two TCs. He wants to boom. Geoff getting Fletching. Where's your archers? Okay, the archers are coming forward. This is like, yeah. they got to so do guess something now. this was their play. Their play was to have two players go feudal, but they didn't want to have them wall and too much behind it. There's the siege. You called it. Yep. And the day here. He's getting a little bit of food eco going, but it definitely his eco is balanced for siege. Yeah, this feels late because Sato could get like a siege workshop. Yeah, but the elephant is coming out. The armored elephant. Oh. These things are so much thicker you know than what? battering ram. If they don't they see this so coming, strong. those could get in so fast. I love armored elephants compared to rams and a scorpion behind. The Dave's eco balance for this is absolutely okay. sick. I want the elephant to wait. I don't think you go with just one. Let's get a reaction. They're going now. Let's let's listen to the boomers. All right. Oh, well, we can make Manganers. Manganer TC should be. Oh, <laughs> nice timing when you say that. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can you predict the future, maybe? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Everything that you just said happened. Whoa. What happened now? I've done that before. <laughs> On arena though. Oh my god. Well, I'm fine. Okay, should I make a castle in your base? Uh, you can make it be, make it here. But I'm, I'm, I'm fine by the way. I will get to Megan. Okay. Let's kill the chatter. Alright. Apparently... It really sounds like Smiley was much. predicting that. I think he said Lemmy. I think, Lemmy, can you predict oh. the future? <laughs> so they got an Oracle on their team. Going yeah. for the Mule Cart. <laughs> oh, no. Is it, is it surrounded? I don't think it can move. Or he didn't yeah. care. I don't know. And that Elephant is going to take down the market. They're diving in. Wow. I don't know why they focused the market that no. hard. The Elephant lost all of its health. Yeah, I want more Elephants. Here they come. The Magnus out. What's... He's going to keep it inside for now. Here's the shot on the elephant. The scouts are going to dive okay. it. Does he try to repair that? I don't think yeah. so. Let's hear Westland. I feel like they're probably kind of hyped right now. Yeah. Or are they silent? <laughs> silent killers? <laughs> it shows yeah. you all the awesome voice the game. <laughs> Up to this workshop eerst. And then even wachten. Yep. Er komt meer bij. Ook vanaf Mark. Even wachten op meer olifanten. Maximaal idle. Hij staat maximaal idle. Ja, hou maar idle, hè. Dat is ook wel wat waard. Kasteel van Geel. Kasteel van Geel hier. Ja, dat vinden we, vinden we dat trouwens er, hè. New, uh, Let's cut the chatter. As I am denied. Oh, 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 this yeah. is working. 
they are doing as well as they can here. And this is what I said is <laughs> they can kill Sato. They have the best chance possible. Right. If they take him out and make this a 3v2 or him have to reboom for a while. Yep. Sato can't really do much here. He can make Maganels. And that elephant, if Lemmy doesn't delete the castle, Ooh. that elephant. Oh, he does delete. He does okay, delete. Okay. okay. And oh, but Smiley is coming in with camels now. Ooh. And Hindu camels here are going to be sick. I, I, part the of archers wants... will do decent against them, but if the archers don't come back to protect that siege workshop, all the elephants and siege coming forward are just going to get picked off. They're going to buy Sato some time. And Sato now with that mango. Oh my gosh, that mango shot was nasty. They need to take that mango down. The archers, the, the scorpions are all exposed. They don't have any calves supporting them right now. He takes nope. the squirps down. The archers might be next. This looked really... Oh, oh, oh the, the split. split. Come on, Jeff. You got this. You know, not the worst micro, but this is... Oof. Oh, it was good until it Bada wasn't. Boom. Oh, tries to split the house, block them. Uh, and the rest of the oh. archers are pretty much dead. They still needed some uh, yeah. scouts. That Maganel still is fine now. Yeah, the Ecos, though, with this sustained feudal, Maui Zawa's farm count is looking pretty nice. And the biggest issue they're going to face here is that Smiley is going to be making nothing but camels behind the boom. Yeah, I think that the, the push needs to continue when they hit Castle right now. It just needs to continue. You don't, I don't think you ease off here. Castle. Yeah, no, you have to keep going. And with the Castle and... going to protect Sato, I think maybe you hit them in the middle. Yep, but oh, this is gonna be so crazy. Yeah, Smoke a lot said they needed more elephants. Yeah, could you imagine if there was like a few more and they like took the TC down and the siege workshop? They just yeah, did... the issue is one elephant actually got picked off by camels. Oh, that's brutal. Great play by Smiley yeah. going and doing that. I mean, honestly, I I feel like one of the biggest uh, misplays here was the Dave building a siege so far back. If he built it as forward as possible, like right next to the shallows, the walk time even would be so much better for anything that he was making. Do you there. think it was to try to be sneaky, probably? Probably, yeah. And I would have even liked two or three of them mass for a sec and then a big massive push because Sato was able to I put don't the mind. Siege Workshop I don't down mind right the away. One. Maybe even two, no, though. That, that single elephant did some work, destroyed the uh, Sato's market. Which, when you're trying to boom and you're under pressure, the market is actually such a massive tool. Yeah. Because maybe you can only get wood right now. Maybe you can only get gold. So Satobing it without the market there, actually, I feel like, did hurt him a little bit. Right. But obviously, he's fine. And if we look at his point of view, he has already gotten an extra 100 stone. Looks like he built the market to buy that stone. He's going for a TC at the back. He's already sending the five bills there. He is not bothered by any of that early pressure. Not at he, all. He is sticking to the team name, and he's going to boom. <laughs> yeah, we see a fourth TC for Lemmy, a third coming up for um, Smiley, and Sato has three TCs, so... Wait, there's a fourth from Lemmy? Oh, there is, right yeah, in the front there. right in the front on the stone. And Lemmy can make war wagons oh, if he really wants. Those bada booms. The Manganels now are caught out. Now he's out, but the Korean bonus? Oh, Sato forgot he could have gotten off another attack round, oh, but he's they're... splitting the Manganels up. Yeah, still not that bad for... They were dead anyways. I'll take yeah, it. I'd take traded it. traded the best he could. Now stable coming down forward for Smiley. All right, we got some camels and we got some elephants here from the Dave. I'd love to see them go forward and they get are. some damage. Because Sato is still exposed on the right. Yeah, or the other thing with this map is you know people are going to be booming in the back. Oh, they could loop true. around here. Sato going for a fifth TC. <laughs> Man, the... There to go around the side. They could easily wipe some of that stuff out. The boomers cool. are living Smiley, up to their name. Miley has broken into Maui Zawa's base and going to get some damage because it's going to be Knight versus Camel. Although, Jeff's ranges are at home. So he'll be able to send in some archers soon. 
what well crossbows and Maui Zawa decides to trap the camels in their base walling them back okay. up and where they broke out those elephants take down stuff so quick they, too oh yeah elephants are so much better than rams they are right. so strong if they go for that TC on the right, they'll be able to take it down no problem. I see a Magno the coming crossbows, out. Crossbows here are going to be so hard countered by the war wagons, but the Hindu camels. Oh, and we see some shawarma riders coming. I love seeing shawarma riders here. So sick. Where are they at? Oh, There's they're right one there. With the three yep. camels. The Magno is going to kill these elephants, though. Forward. Satoa's walled it in. Yep, I would have loved to see the elephants walk forward. They would have one tapped that gate. That's I think. true. And then the Magno has to run. The problem is yep. they're they're being zoned out by one Magno right now. And Smiley looping around the back here. Is she gonna well, break in or is she gonna She's go gonna for gonna hit that the gate. wood line from Jeff? Let's see if they notice the this. Oh, right they away they right notice, away. but don't open it. No, it's locked. It's okay, locked. it's locked. Good heads up play by uh. Mawiziwa. Mawiziwa. I gotta say, Mawiziwa. the war might be a little bit deceiving because the boomers are booming and the Western Paladin are not. But they have done a fantastic job of trying to make the best of going up against Sato. Yeah, they're making this like, a game. This has been amazing right. to watch. It's they're... so entertaining for me. Yeah, and Ice Thunder, yes, Sato is actually playing in this tournament. I love it. Yeah, it yep. is the real Sato. He is the big daddy of the tournament. I know I said there's some big daddies. He is the biggest daddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, Smiley got in somehow. Let me know. Even with the gate, the, the gate must have opened. I think those camels were still alive from before. Okay, and oh the. The elephants have pivoted to the left of that TC, oh, yeah. but Satos there with his Mangonels again. He's tracking it yeah. with them. Oof, the Mangonels do so much damage to the elephants. Yeah. Now you can heal the elephants, elephants with monks, down. but... I would finish off the TC in a sec just because. And you really needed to keep the camels by the war wagons and just have the Shravamsha dive oh, for the Mangonels. One more hit on the TC. Oh, the repairs yep. coming in so clutch. The repairs are there just in time. Yeah, but that hill bonus at the castle is just shredding the Dave's army. I really like the counter because they can't keep their focus on the push. They have to worry about these camels in the back. Yeah, and Smiley breaking into Jeff's space only to find crossbows waiting. And Jeff did build a TC in the back to keep that area safe. Yeah, she's I love it. Pivot, it looks like, to the Dave. Did they spot yeah. the TC? No, they do not know it's there. The push continues, though. These elephants, they take so long to walk over. It's down to one yeah. last weak elephant. I guess the monks heal elephants, right? Yep, they do. That's why they mix the monks in, it looks like. And maybe a couple of conversions when it's low army. That too, but... Oh, with a nice attack around there. An elephant is dead. The yep. TC's gonna finish it off. Oh, man. The knights and the camels... And Another the shot! ...is coming in, though. They have a decent amount of army forward. Yeah. Smiley has good camels, though, cutting off that mangonel and the reinforcement. And Smiley got into the Dave space. Ooh. And the Dave does not, not see looking. It. Okay, he sees. Oh, he sees it now. Yeah. Crossbow's coming over to help. Not enough room in the TC. Smiley is getting some good damage here, even just from the idle time. Right. Because that's about 30 vills there that were and, idle. And Green's focus is all at home. His archers are sitting still. His monks. Yeah, but uh, don't look at Sato's vill count. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this man has just Through disregarded all... what's going on. Made a couple mangoes here or there and just made TCs. He's like, I am booming. I don't care what happened earlier. This Two was castles the game plan. Up. Imagine what his vill count would be if the pressure didn't happen. It's still insane. Yeah. And the so war wagons now. He's going to go into, um, what are they called? Seppel? Manaspa. Manaspa. Seppel, uh, never mind. That's um, sled dogs or something like that. Manaspa. Yeah. Now, Mawizawa still has a good number of knights. Fully upgraded as well, but 
what are knights going to do against the camels? I f really feel like Hindustanis and Gujaras, though, are very good on maps like this. Because on the Arabia-esque ones, you're always going to have armies together. But on a map like this, when the players are together, the camels can always find some damage. Yeah, the... And here's going to be a good fight if they can catch up, but it doesn't look like either Maui Zawa or the Dave has husbandry yet. I think the military is really going to flip soon. Oh, yeah. And the Naspa spam. Smiley has a decent amount of camels. Lemmy has a decent and amount of war wagons that continue to get... If you didn't know as well, Manaspa create very fast. I think they did actually nerf it since the Civ came out. Okay. But it is still a fast now, creation time. So those two, two castles will be able to mass an army, no problem. So I think I got this wrong earlier last round. Manaspa don't buff knights, right? They get buffed from no. knights being by them. Yes. Okay. And I'm not sure if ally knights affect them or if it's only the same players. I think it oh. is only the same players, though. Interesting. I can't read the tooltip on Manaspa right now, so I cannot tell you. Yeah, there's a lot of archers from the Britons starting to mass up, but... I guess they are great against the camels. Nothing is going to stand against the Manaspa soon. And with three melee armor as well. They do only have 75 HP. But yeah. they're high attack, high armor. Smiley's, That's the trade off. I Smiley's have. about to click Imp. Sato's right behind her. And Sato has another castle, almost two castles ready. Yeah. And the thing is, that is a nice crossbow mass. But it is not going to do anything against these war wagons that are coming over. War yeah. wagon have over four times their health. And enough armor that the crossbows tickle. Right. It's like shooting um, rattans. And in fact, exactly. one of the stupidest fights in Age of Empires is rattans against war wagons. It's like, lasts forever, nothing dies. It's kind of funny. Yeah. But look at the farm eco from Sato. This man is playing farm sim right now. With those fortified <laughs> churches to boost his eco, that is going wait. to just be insane. Wait, what do fortified churches do to your eco? They boost it by 10%, I think it is. Everything in the the, the radius? 10%. In the circle? In an eight, in an eight tile radius will is, be boosted by 10%. Wait, do they fire arrows? What's the little range indicator? If if they are garrisoned, they do, yeah. Oh my gosh. Those yeah, it are, is a safe point for Vils. Those are way cooler than I thought. They're kind of like um, poles, but way they better. Are, they are extremely strong. Fortified churches are thick. Sounds way better than a full work. And if you have forward vills, you could almost fortified church rush. Like, if you go for forward siege, you can build fortified churches forward, garrison the vills, and then it'll shoot like a tower. So what happens in 10 times shared civ if you have a fortified church and a full work? No idea. Never tried <laughs> it. But the Manaspa here. Holy. They are just... <laughs> and he's coming forward. Yep, he's there's the castle. castle down. He's just going to drop it. He's not even backing up. They're trying to bang on it. I don't think the damage is there. No. Not quite, no. Maui Zawa. The Manasma are going to show why they're king here in this fight against the Knights. I think they want to. The toe hits him. The GG has to be coming in here very shortly. Yep. Their armies are decimated. They did not boom. I like well, this map. Well, I guess map. Jeff has a bit of a boom going, but he's not over 100 bills yet. I've not played At this, this map. At this point, I can confidently say that it is over. It is over. Yeah, boomers are going to take the set 2-0. Oh, they made it very entertaining for being a six-point team. That almost worked. Sato was under pressure for a moment, and it seemed like it was going to go bad until some big Maganel shots. And Smiley picking off the reinforcement elephants. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, guys, uh, Sato is Vasco in Hidden Cup. So I'm going to congratulate him in the interview. Yeah, Rob's very sure he's Vasco. I haven't had a chance to watch Hidden Cup. But. Boomers. Taking game two. I'll get the MVP pull out. We're going to be quick on the interview because we have another game live right now.
Okay, MVP poll. I'm just going to do a one minute poll. They said, GG, guys, we had fun. I'm giving the MVP this game to Smiley because those camels really, really helped take the pressure off of Sato early there. Right. Killing the elephants. And Lemmy with the heads up play of what was coming. We, we listened in for a second. So his teammates definitely um coming through for him. Not that he didn't come through. He did well himself, but great game. I'm going to go through the stats real quick. Get some eco KDs on the screen. Do a quick update. So Hillfort finally played for the first time. I love to see that. And we'll get this win updated. It's been drafted, I think, one other time, but it wasn't actually played. So 2 0 boomers take the set. The MVP is tied, so it looks like it will highest go to Sato. Score. Sato is the highest score. Yes, that is correct. So congrats, Sato, on the MVP. And we can ask if they want to interview. But that was, the second game was very entertaining. Yeah. Okay, they want to interview. We're going to pop in real quick. So let's go down there, Rob. Up to Hello. 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 Congratulations on your guys' win. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You know, that second game was more a lot more competitive than we thought. We knew you guys were against a low team. How did you guys feel with that early pressure right away? Hmm. Well, Lemmy knew it somehow, so Lemmy, Lemmy, <laughs> yeah. <said> Lemmy <laughs> knows this spot. Yeah, we actually spy cammed you guys in that moment for the reaction, and we heard him kind of calling that it was coming. You're like, you knew Lemmy? <laughs> so that was funny. <laughs> yeah, that's why they did this uptime, like super crazy uptime. Makes yeah. sense. And game one, how bad did it feel to have a re when you had three boars and your ally pushing gear for you, Sato? Yeah, exactly. I was living the dream. Like, I was, uh, yeah, living the dream with my, uh, with my three ball, more goals. Everything was going so right. And then they called the re. I was, no. Yeah. Yeah. But that re enabled you to just fish boom from the super pocket position and have some fun with the step lancers. Yes. Yeah, true. Now we went for me in the end. We were delayed. A minute. We wanted to see the reaction when you hit the boar. I don't know if you read the rules. Did you notice anything interesting when you pulled the boar? <laughs> uh, Smiley read the rules for us in terms of laming. Okay. Uh, so so you knew... I knew about it, but I got surprised still. Because <laughs> I, I had the ill bonus and my scout was completely dead after this. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the boars really eat scouts. Yeah, yep. it was a lot of damage even downhill. I was surprised. And I just want to say, Lemmy, for your ELO, your build orders have been fantastic so far. You've hey. played above expectation from my point of view. Thank you, man. Yeah, especially the first game with your Khmer build order for the scouts. It looked very, very smooth. Thank you. Yeah, you had 11 eco kills very early in that game. We were like, dang, he's at 11 already? <laughs> yeah, one of those guys didn't have uh, Loom yet. Oh, reason, like relatively late in, in fuel. that's the confidence not doing loom <laughs> <laughs> ouch did not even realize i didn't have loom but yeah, yeah. after the first game i said could have watched you guys like they were dominating in future edge yes scouts. yeah both smiley and lemmy were doing fantastic and smiley's yep. camels in game two they're really taking the pressure off by sniping any of those cam or the armored elephants sorry coming out of the workshop 
those camels were just harassing all the reinforcements they were trying to get. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good play because we couldn't really fight, 